In this video, I'm going to show how to create a file provider, which is part of the process of storing an image on the Android device. There are indeed several steps involved, from permissions to adding a UI element to creating the file provider, which we're going to cover in this video, create an intent, handle return, and then we're also going to upload this to Firebase Cloud Storage and record a record of it in Firebase Database. So there are a lot of steps and as much as we'd like to go in a certain predefined order, we have to take a few things out of order so that we can assemble them all at one time. So first, why do we need a file provider in the first place? Well, it allows us to securely share files with a content-based URL instead of a file-based URL. And what that means is we can restrict access to one of these URLs or URIs and then grant access temporarily when we invoke an intent, and that intent might start an activity. In our case, we're going to be starting the camera. So we're effectively giving temporary permission to the camera to store this image. That's how content URIs work. Now consider the alternative with a file. When we set permissions on a file, we're setting permissions for essentially everybody or a limited set of groups. We don't have the option of simply restricting a file to a certain number of applications, and that's why we use this file provider. What are the steps? First, we need to create an XML file with the paths where we want this file provider to have access. Then we want to define the provider in Android Manifest XML. And then we want to share the provider or a URI from the provider with the camera when we toggle the camera with an intent. Let's jump in. I'll start by navigating to the res directory in my Android project. And res is where we put resources that don't compile. Things like XML files and things like images or even vector images. The file we're about to create is going to have the paths where we want our file provider to be able to store images and then share those images. And it needs to be in a folder called XML. You notice that we do not yet have a folder called XML. So let's right click on res, choose new, then Android resource directory will be fine. And let's call this one XML, resource type, also XML, and then choose OK. Once this is created, let's right click and choose another new file. And this one we'll call file paths.xml. This is an XML file that's going to be a lot of XML and just a little bit of content that we need to change. So what I recommend to you is I'll have this on GitHub. Just go grab it and change what you need to change. I'm pasting this in from another project I have, and I'm leaving one part that I need to complete right here. First of all, I have three paths defined. A production images path, an images path that would work on the emulator for when we're testing out and debugging, and then simply root, which is wherever we are right now. So it's these two that I need to change, because if we take a look at view, tool windows, and then device file explorer, with the emulator running, we'll see that we can follow this path, storage emulated zero Android data. Now notice under data, there's a series of folders that look kind of like package names and they're all different values. We have app plant diary, individual assignment, com Android, so on and so forth, com my plant diary. And these are directories that are specific to each app on my phone. So they are essentially private directories for those apps. That's what we need to plug in uh, between data and files, both in this production version and in this emulated version here. But what is that value? Go to Gradle and the build.gradle in the app directory, and we're going to see an important value called application ID. That application ID is very important for multiple reasons and will be important in this demonstration. Number one, you see that it typically matches our root package name. Number two, it's our unique identifier on the Google Play Store. So you see up in the URL, I have com.myplantdiary, but what if I change that to com.plantplaces? It's going to bring up the page for Plant Places as a separate application, or if I say plant flashcards, it will bring up the plant flashcards page. So that application ID is very important, and that's what I'm going to simply copy here and paste between data and files in both of these paths. Next, let's go ahead and register our provider in the Android manifest. We want to be in the application element, which you see here, not within an activity, usually right after an activity. We'll start with the provider element, which notice it gives us an autocomplete for that. And it says that, hey, you need an authorities and a name. 
Before I forget, let me go ahead and close this. We're going to need an open and close tag, so I'll go ahead and get, do the close tag. Now, the Android authorities, remember that application ID that we just saw in build.gradle? Well, we're going to re need to reuse that here, and then we'll give it some extension like .file provider. But the good news is we can use a variable to actually pull that value out of our build.gradle. As a matter of fact, it might be interesting to see if we could use that same variable in the paths file that we just created, but nonetheless, I'll leave that as an exercise for the user. So to pull it out of our build gradle, we simply do within the quotes dollar sign curly application ID. Very important. Make sure that the spelling and the capitalization is exactly what it looks like in build.gradle. As a matter of fact, probably a good idea just to copy and paste that because if not, I'm liable to make a mistake. Now, this is a normal string, so after we have the application ID, we can simply say file provider. I'm doing mine all lowercase, so I'll just want to remember that when I go back and refer to this file provider later. Very important, that's authorities, it's not name. Name is pretty much the same thing all the time for this, where authorities is unique to our application, which is why we have this application ID here. So you might think name, I'll just call it my file provider. No, don't do that. You actually have to put this exact string in there for the purpose that we're using the file provider. You see it auto-completes for us again, and that's essentially saying this is the class that will serve as the provider. Two more things that we want to do. Android exported false means that we are not giving permission to any other app to use this file. But we can give temporary permissions with one more attribute. Grant URI permissions equals true. That means that we can take a content URI, we can pass it through an intent to an activity, and we can effectively grant permission to use that URI while that activity is active with the intent that we used to call it. One more thing we need to add here is a reference to that XML file that we created just a moment ago. We'll do that in a metadata tag. Go ahead and close before I forget. And for the attribute Android colon name, we'll give it the value android.support. Uppercase file underscore provider underscore paths. Next, we need a reference to that file. So for that, we'll say Android colon resource and then double quote and then the at symbol, which will give us a reference to the XML folder that we created earlier and then file underscore paths. And you see that auto completes. And that shows us how to create a file provider to store an image. Now, I hate doing a video and not demonstrating it, but remember that this is one ingredient in a much larger recipe where we are toggling the camera, we're requesting permissions, we're capturing a photo, we're saving the photo locally, and to do so we need this file provider. And then we're synchronizing that photo with Firebase Cloud Storage. So this is part of a much longer journey, but later on when we get to toggling the camera with an intent and telling it to save the image, we will already have this file provider set up and we can just plug it in. So that video is coming shortly after this one. I encourage you to watch that and you can see it all work together. Thank you.